In this lesson right here, what we're going to be doing is taking a look at how to work in the viewer window, with this being our viewer window. So, Zach, is that pretty important? Sounds pretty important to me because this is really going to give us all of our feedback in our 3D scene, which that's pretty standard for you know any 3D package you happen to be working in. But unlike any other 3D package, we've got real-time feedback. As we do stuff, we see what we see the changes instantly. Right. And, you know, bottom line is we need to have some sort of window into our 3D world that exists inside the computer as we're working. Right. All right, so what I'm going to do first is start out by just throwing something simple in the scene like a cube just so that we have a, a point of reference as we're navigating and doing a few other things that I'm going to be showing off. Indeed. So to do this, and, and I'll be talking more about this a little bit later on in the VTM uh, as far as the specifics are concerned, but let's go ahead and come down here to Elements and let's just drag a cube out here into the center and let's just scale that up real quick. All right, so let's go ahead first and start out by talking about what kind of view we're looking at at the moment. Right now we're looking at the producer perspective. So it is a perspective viewport. In other words, it is a 3D representation of our scene. Right. We have depth, okay? So um, let's go ahead and talk about how we can do a little bit of viewer navigation. First thing I want to show you is how we can dolly in and out. By holding the control key down on your keyboard and using the left mouse button, you can see that as I pull the mouse down towards me, the object goes away from me. And as I push my mouse forward, the object then comes toward me, okay? So it's maybe opposite than the way some of you guys are thinking, but again, to dolly, it's simply control, left click, and drag up and down, okay? Next thing I want to show you is how we can track. All we need to do is hold shift, by the way, for some of you guys out there, depending on what application you may be used to working in, this is also known as panning. So I'm going to hold shift down, left click, and drag around the scene, and at this time, I am now tracking, okay? The next big important thing is going to be how to orbit, or again, from other applications, you may know it as tumble. So to orbit around, I'm going to hold both shift and control down. While doing that, you'll see that I am now tumbling or orbiting around my object. Okay. Now there are a few other ones that we can talk about, but before branching off to these other kind of special ones, if you will, let's go ahead and talk about something else. Let's say I had, let's go ahead and do a <laughs> quick little copy there, and I'm not going to talk much about what I'm doing at the moment for the simple fact that we cover this coming up in the next few lessons. But we've got another object over here, and right now you'll see that as I orbit around the scene that I'm orbiting around this particular guy, but what if I needed to orbit around this one over here? Well, with the object selected, I could simply hit F on the keyboard to frame it up. Then I could hold Control to simply dolly back away from it, and then hold Control shift and now you can see that this is now my center of interest right Very there. Very nice. Okay, so let's go ahead and switch back over here. Okay, and F to frame it up, and Control to kind of dolly back a little bit. There you go. All right, so some other things to look at. Let's go ahead and look at follow. Okay, this is kind of interesting. If I hold Control down on the keyboard, okay, you already know that the left mouse button will make me dolly in and out. But if I hold the right mouse button, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the camera and the camera's interest. And the camera's interest is something that the camera always points to. Okay, Kind of like a target? Yes, exactly, for those of you familiar with other applications. And I will, uh, I'll actually add another camera in the scene in just a minute so that we can actually see this. But uh, let's go ahead and hold Control. And what I'm going to do is right mouse button and drag. And now you can see it's like I'm dollying in, dollying out. But I'm actually moving the interest as well. So now I can kind of slide over to the right or slide over to the left. Okay? Okay, I see it. So uh, another one that's interesting is the pan tilt. This is pretty cool. This is uh, basically it moves the camera interest around the camera itself. It's kind of like actually taking your head and looking left or looking right, looking up, looking down. To do it, all we need to do is hold Control and Shift down and then the right mouse button. So I'm going to hold Control and Shift, right mouse button. It's like, okay, who's over there? Look back over here. Hey, what's that over here? Or what's down here at my feet? Or let me look up at the sky. So basically, again, all we're doing is we're moving the actual camera's interest around the camera itself. But it's like you're looking around, and it's called pan tilt. And that's shift, control, and the right mouse button. And then the next one that you may find to be a little bit interesting, let's go ahead and just kind of center this up here so that this will work really well, is the slide. And the slide is just simply holding shift down and the right mouse button. And watch what it does. Okay, in, get closer, now further away. It does, basically the camera is following an ellipse, okay? And the camera, in, uh, the camera interest is the, uh, the summit of the ellipse itself. 
Okay. All right. So, so so it's like the ellipse get like curves toward the object. Towards the object, and, and then the camera way. always stays focused on it as it slides up and down. You got it exactly. And then finally, something else that you may need to use from time to time would simply be Z drag, and I'll hold Z down and drag, and you'll notice down in the bottom left hand corner of the viewer that I've got field of view, and I'm changing the degrees of it. Basically, what I'm doing right here is just changing the camera's angle of view. Okay, so that's zooming. That's a real zoom in, zoom right. out. It's not physically moving the camera forwards or backwards. So there's a, a real quick look at some um, some basic viewer navigation. Now let's go ahead and take a minute and turn our focus up here to these two buttons. First thing I want to do is point out the fact that right now we're just looking at a single window here. And we've got the single view, but there's, we can have multiple windows, or not multiple windows, but multiple viewers or like, like viewports, multiple if you will. Multiple panes. Exactly. So if I come up here to, thank you, that's actually the word I was looking for. If I come up here to view and come down to panes, right now you're seeing right now we're on number one, control one. We can split it to, uh, to two panes. If we hit control two, that's the hotkey. Okay, so there we are with two panes. Oh, nice, side by side. And let's go and come back up here, and let's go and switch it over to three. And let's go ahead and switch it over to four. And of course, I can stretch this window out right here. I could even come up here and double click it to go ahead and maximize this ah. thing so that now I can work inside of it. Very nice. You'll notice that as I come around here, it, this may be really hard to see with the compression and the size that the VTM video is actually scaled down to. But right now, this is my active view. You'll see that there's this highlighted white border right here. Let's, let me middle click over in this one. I could left click as well. It doesn't matter. Again, it's really hard to see, but if you if you kind of pay attention as I click through these, you can see it kind of lighting up. Zach, are you able to see that? Yeah, I can see it. Okay. It may again it, be. It is a little thin, yeah, though. Yeah, it may be kind of tough. And this is pretty important because if I wanted to take one of these views and do something specific with them, such as change it to an orthographic view, like let's say, let's come over here to my producer front view. And let's change this over to, it's a front view at the moment, let's change it over to a producer perspective. With it active now, I could simply come up here to view, come down here to perspective, and then producer perspective, and you can see both of these guys are the same. Okay? So, and also this is good to point out. Obviously, since they're the same, we're looking basically through the same camera through both right, of these right. guys. Right, right. Okay, so, uh, so anyways, you can see how setting one of these can be quite important. I'll go ahead and set this one back again, come back up here to view. You saw how I can switch over to perspective view. Let's go ahead and come back down to an orthographic view, and let's go ahead and change this over to, uh, let's go ahead and go back to a front view. Now, there's other things we can do as well. We could come down here, and we can also pull up a schematic view if we wanted to, and a schematic view is going to give us a visual representation of all of the different objects in our scene. And we'll be working with this a lot more later on, but I just wanted to show it to you right now. In fact, you're going to see it in this very VTM a little bit later on when we get into actually talking about characterizing a character that we're going to bring in from Maya. Okay? Very cool. So, uh, and, and by the way, when you're working inside the schematic view, control key allows you to dolly in and out. Okay? I can hold shift and track around just like when working back in these other views. Right. Worth, worth pointing out. So with this guy active, I can just go ahead and come back up here, come back down to orthographic, and hit front. Or I could have, of course, just did a simple control and the F key. And there you go, back to a front view. All right, so let's go ahead and come back up here. So now that we've seen how we can go between different perspective and all that's and orthographic views, let's go ahead and do something else interesting. Let's go ahead and come up here to perspective and create a new camera. Now, this focus or this lesson, the focus of this lesson is not to talk about new cameras and, and all the settings and all because there's tons of them. But what I wanted to do is just simply show you the actual camera. If I was to come over here and kind of zoom around, there's the camera itself right now. Oh, look, they actually modeled the camera in. Pretty interesting, eh? Yeah. Now, if I uh, come over here and let's activate this viewport, I just middle click just to keep things nice and simple. Come up here to view, come down to perspective. You'll see now there's camera. That's, that happened to be its default name, first camera. So I'll go ahead and select it, and here is the camera we're now looking through. Now watch this. If I actually perform any of my navigation things, like such as Dolly, I'll hold Control and then left mouse. You can see I'm physically moving oh, yeah, my camera nice. in and out. Okay? Or, as I was talking about a minute ago, if I hold if the right mouse button down while holding Control down, remember how I said I'm actually moving the interest as well? Well, guess oh, what? Yeah. There's the interest. You get to actually mo see it move. So check this out. Let's go ahead and just kind of move this, I don't know, maybe right about there, maybe over a little bit more. And now let's go ahead and come down here and grab the actual interest itself. 
And if I can get it, there we go. And now, if I come in here and start moving the actual interest, look at that. As I said a oh, second ago. that's convenient. Yeah, it's just a, a, I'm just kind of trying to, uh, to show how, basically, as I was saying a second ago, the camera's always going to look at the camera's interest. And that's what's happening here. Pretty cool, eh? Oh, yeah. Okay, so let's see. What else can we talk about? So we've got a new camera in the scene. You can see it. You can see how it's actually moving over here and how navigations work. So let's go ahead and just dig our way back up here. Yeah, just kind of off to the side. It's, it's actually pretty amazing that that real-time update on that on that uh, viewer is actually p coming forth on all four panes at the same time. Absolutely. That's really cool. Now let's go ahead and do this. Um, let's go ahead and I'm just going to double-click to kind of bring this back down to size. And I've done a little bit of sizing around myself here, so I'm just going to kind of bring it back down and just make it fit on in here. Something else I'm going to do here, and let's get actually right about there. So now, of course, it's a little bit tight. There's another way that you can work that's really interesting. If I come up here to view, I can go full screen as well. Okay, so now I'm full screen, and hopefully this is going to be caught uh, properly with the actual recording device at the moment. But now if I want to, let's just go ahead and do Control-1, Control-2, Control-3, and Control-4. Very cool, eh, for switching around between these things. Now I'm working in that's, – that's pretty massive there. I yeah, mean, that's huge. I mean, I get a really strong feel of what's going on, and I can still uh, hold down the Control and the Shift key and kind of move around, uh, dolly in track around okay very very cool now to go ahead and come back out of this I'll just hit control s again or you can hit alt enter either of the two and that'll bring you back out uh, I thought I'd point that out because a lot of people get confused about that and it will seem impossible to get out of that window if you're not aware of control s or alt enter okay very so, cool thought you might be used or interested in knowing that so a couple more things let's go ahead we're going to be talking about the camera switcher later on when we get into stories and all let's go ahead and come down here right now to frame select it frame all and reset frame selected is going to allow you to come in here and simply select an object let's just pick on this guy over here and come up here to view frame selected I did it a minute ago just to demonstrate how we could orbit around something um, right. Let's go ahead and just select frame select, and that's what we've done. Same Shift thing as hitting the interest to that object and zooms in on it. Exactly. Now if I hit view frame all, what that will do is put everything in my scene, boom, inside the viewer right there. And then finally, if you just happen to get yourself completely messed up for whatever reason, who knows, you know, you can always come up to view reset and it will reset your view back to center. Yeah, it's really nice because with all those controls I imagine it's pretty easy to get lost in there sometimes. Yeah, for a beginner especially. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, so anyways, there's a bunch of good stuff to know about navigating around inside your view. Now let's go ahead and spend just a minute and talk about display. Right now we're viewing the display in this particular window in normal mode, so this is going to show us everything. It's going to show us all of our objects in there, both our models and lights, cameras, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. What X-ray is going to do X-ray is also going to show us everything, but it's going to – now, I don't have a good example in here at the moment, but it's something that we'll be seeing later on, and we'll get into it quite a bit. But that is when we have a character in the scene that's got a skeleton inside them. By turning if – we're, if we're in normal mode, basically the skeleton will be inside the geometry, and you're not going to see all of the bones and all. But if we go into X-ray mode, we'll see the skeleton, what will look like superimposed over the character itself. Oh, okay. okay. I see. And then models only, what that's going to do is basically make everything disappear except for our models, our geometry. Okay? Uh, so let's go ahead and take this and change it back over to normal. You'll notice, by the way, Control-A, Control, Control-A, all three of these will allow you to toggle between them so you don't have to keep coming up here to okay, the Okay, so you can just keep hitting Control-A over and over, and you cycle through those. Absolutely. In fact, if I hit Control-A right now, look, models only, Control-A, X-ray, Control-A, back to normal. Uh, very nice. Okay. So a few more things to talk about. Height select it, show select it, height unselect it, and show unselect it. Very simple stuff. It's just a matter if I come in here, let's say select this guy right here, come up here to display, height select it. This just actually hides it. Okay? Simple enough, and uh, if I can come down here, I can simply select it, come up here to display, and show select it. So it's a way of hiding specific things that you may want to hide. Try to help you out if your scene is a little cluttered. You got it. And, of course, uh, hide unselected. You know, you could select things. It's like a toggle, basically. Hide everything that's not selected. Right. And then same thing for show unselected. Now we can come down here to model display. This is just how we're going to actually show things inside this particular view. Of course, these settings are stored or maintained for each of the different views you have up. So if we're working in a four four pane split, then you can come in here and say, in this particular one, I want to see in wireframe. So now we're viewing this in wireframe. Oh, okay. 
or I may want to come down here to um, maybe I want to see it flat, or uh, let's come down here look at some of the other ones real quick. I may want it to see it lighting. You can see now that the top shaded. If we had lights in the scene, uh, let's go ahead and come back down here to oops, excuse me, uh, textured or shaded or shaded with texture. Okay, and these are different things that we'll be exploring later on when we start getting into materials and shaders and getting textures involved in our scene. Right. So let's go ahead and display. Let's come on down here to models visibility. This allows us to basically control. It's like filters, if you will. It's a way to quickly filter out maybe the cameras, or maybe we have ten different lights in the scene, and they're kind of in the way, and we may want to turn lights off. A quick example, I could come over here and grab a light, drop a light in the scene. So now you see there's some sort of illumination going on even. So if I can go ahead and just kind of move this up a little bit. And um, yeah, it's actually nice that the viewport, the viewer window intensity. actually uh, adjusts when you call in a light. So there you go. And uh, you know, maybe I can go ahead and let's just take another light, drag it over here, and maybe make this light into a spotlight real quick. And so there you go. And let's go ahead and just kind of move that up. People may be kind of panicking right now. Let's just kind of rotate that on over. So I got a few lights in the scene. I do have the ability again to come up here to display, come down to models display. You see lights is now activated. I can simply turn it off and all that's going to do is just filter out all my lights so that I can continue working. Just keep get the scene a little less yeah, cluttered. Yeah, very handy. Okay, absolutely. So uh, let's see a few more things. Uh, down here at the very bottom we can display rates, a bunch of good information such as the frame rate. Uh, just, you know, just, there's a lot of information there for you. Uh, to gather out while you're working your scene if you want to test how fast things are playing back. Yeah, and for those of you who can't read that, we're getting a frame rate of about 74 right now. Yeah, so even when we're like flipping around real quick, we're still holding nice and 74 frames per that second. That is awesome. So we can go ahead and come back down here, turn it back off. A few more things real quick is we can display memory usage if we want to. Um, we can display our uh, time code down here in the bottom. By turning this on, of course, this is going to show. Let's go over here to a like, control 2 to a two-pane split. Now you can see it's, we're seeing it in both views. If I drag my little time slider down here, you can see oh, the yeah. frame number. Okay? And turning it back off, we can just come back up here, turn it back off. And then finally, the last thing, and we're not going to get into this right now, but for those of you guys out there that know how to turn on safe frames, we can come in here and say display safe area, and there you go when working for like NTSC. Yeah, lots of stuff to help out those who are working like uh, for video games or broadcast. Or for, it's all for broadcast, really, for production uh, broadcast. So we'll go ahead and come back down here. We'll turn that off. And really, this is all I wanted to cover right here, just how to navigate around our scene, how we can control uh, the way we see things, how we can actually maximize and minimize the viewer window, go full screen, take it out of full screen. It's a bunch of good stuff that we looked at. Very so cool. Hopefully this will help you guys quickly get up to speed with moving around inside the viewer. With that, that concludes this lesson. Thanks.